Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'll do roll call. Mark Bouchard? Here. Maureen Borey? Here. Joanne Shirky is absent excused. Artie Bryson, absent excused. Christy Hilton? Here. Chris O'Regan? Here. Cindy Valentine? Here. And I will accept a motion for someone to chair the meeting. I'll make a motion that Chris O'Regan chair the meeting. Support. Thanks. You're welcome. Way to go, Chris. All in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Okay, let the fun begin. Next we have uh, bills payable in the amount of $10,596.41. I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion for bills payable for $10,596.41. Support. We have motion and support. Is there any other discussion about the bills payable? No. Nope. Hearing none. It'll be a roll call vote. Maureen Borey? Yes. Christy Hilton? Yes. Chris O'Regan? Yes. Cindy Valentine? Yes. Mark Bouchard? Yes. Motion passes. Next, we have the supervisor's report. As of the week 930 of 21. So this is me reading our supervisor, Artie Bryson's report. And maybe a little ad lib. First topic, Ida received, the Harsons Island Transportation Authority received a 250K grant from the state of Michigan to research alternative transportation to Harsons Island. They have three years to spend the money as long as it is to carry out their mission statement, which is to plan and establish a safe, reliable, and cost-effective transportation to Harsons Island. Um, item number two, working on the car and truck leases. Availability is a big issue. Um, that's for our Clay Township PD and also, uh, I believe, our, our water department. Mm -hmm. um, working on, let's see, he says he's working on the building and blight issues. Um, Mr. Bryce <coughs> is also working on finalizing the audit. Uh, number five on the agenda, the hoist is being installed at the Pearl Beach Pier. And we just got an update from Mark who stated that the hoist appears to be installed at this point. Well, installed and the boat is in the cradle. The boat is in the cradle, so we're looking forward to that um, accessibility. And it was called um, Unlimited Charters? Unlimited Fishing Adventures. Unlimited Fishing Adventures. Next order, uh, with the huge amounts of rain and high winds last week. We had a leak in the roof at the Township Hall and Office. We patched it as the best we can, but we still have to get some bids for a permanent fix. Uh, working on the Clay Township Bicentennial Celebration. Remember, honor, and celebrate is a slogan. Um, the Township, with the help of the Police Department and the Fire Department, did a drive-by for our resident Virginia's 100th birthday last week. I saw that post. Uh, thank you very much. Uh -huh. I'm sure um, all that helped uh, make her entire day, I'm, I'm certain of that. She looked like she had a big smile. Uh, the sixth annual Scarecrow Festival is still scheduled for Saturday, October 30th, from noon to 4 p.m. If you have any questions, please contact uh, Cindy Babish. Correct. <clears throat> at our township office this year. Uh, our Clay Township Police Department are doing their Hunter Safety class again on October 12th, 13th, and 14th after school from 4 to 8 p.m. Dinner will be, be provided for the participants and class size is limited. So registration is currently ongoing at the police station and seats are numbered. So if you're interested in getting your youth uh, to Hunter Safety and having them go through that process, which... Uh, most of us are firm supporters of. Um, please contact Clay, Clay Township Police Department. Um, as a correction to that, I believe this year they have to register online with the DNR. 
um, but they can contact the police department for sure on that. But I believe that was a change this year. Thank you. Just for some clarification there. So nobody's surprised when they call. Right. So that's what I see as this week's supervisor report. Um, let's move on to the public comments. Are there any public comments today? Please feel free to step up to the podium, state your name and address, and your concern or your comment. You might have addressed them or already might have already addressed them. You mentioned something about his uh, meetings. Uh, my name is Tom Purcell, 782 Lake Drive. And most of these are just um, from our neighborhood, uh, Englewood Lake and Stark Drive. And I turned in a couple of complaints. And like you mentioned in his supervisor report, maybe he's already addressed these. So these are just some quick uh, questions I had. And okay. Maybe you, I'm not supposed to bring them to you, or but you can point me in the right direction. Well, we can relay them. Uh, yeah, I got uh, three complaints uh, on uh, back from April, and uh, you know maybe they've already addressed them a little bit. Th there's a one on Inglewood where the house burned down ten some years ago, and there's um, uh, 78 78 Inglewood, and there's an old boathouse there and a shed and they were storing stuff. It looks like he's starting to work on it. They painted it and it's kind of like a perfume on a pig, but maybe there is something going on there and they're fixing it up. Um, it had a uh, air conditioner upstairs and the windows are blacked out, so I don't know if, what's going on in there. But anyway, that was one and that was turned in back in April. I just haven't heard nothing. Uh, there was another one, uh, a house, uh, elderly gentleman, had a reverse mortgage on it, ended up, um, giving it back to the mortgage company, and that's 7786 Lake Drive. And this was from 419 of 21. Uh, house is vacant for a long time. Uh, it's a major disrepair. House is on a slab. Um, the old man took the boathouse or the carport and closed it over the years and worked on it and uh, filled gravel around it. And at the end, he had uh, concrete curbs poured up against the house, right up against the siding. and the door is like this high, so you got to step down into the house. So it's probably, you know, rotten footings or, or, you know, probably in disrepair. So anyway, just uh, question that. And then there was um, another one that I turned in uh, quite a while ago. I turned into a planning commission meeting, and it was about, uh, and I don't know if you know, I've, I've been kind of actively involved with the um, short-term rentals on our street. But there was um, three of them on Englewood, and there was one on Stark. The one on Stark uh, belongs to a gentleman named Tim Chartran or something. Nice guy, you know, I like him. He's a good builder, but I don't feel what he's doing is quite right. He's uh, built his house and he is um, letting guests stay with him. So it's like a duplex. And our neighborhood is strictly single family only. So I did turn a copy of this in when I was talking about short term rentals and the Planning Commission had a copy of this, but I did turn another one in just for like a refresher to um, the Blake guy, Shannon. Mm -hmm. So Shannon anyway, Murray. That, that was in the, in the works. So I was just kind of curious of those. And like I said, maybe something's already in the works on those. And uh, I've been here like 42 years. And when you come down into the city, the township right there by uh, Plagans, the marina there, mm -hmm. and you enter the township, there are, uh, three or four lots on the uh, east side of the road. Are you coming in from the from north the side? North, the north. Okay. Coming down from the north, and you're coming in, and there's three or four lots there. They're right across from the marina or Inglewood, and they're overgrown, and they've been like this for years, and there's big piles of concrete, some boats and stuff stuck in there, so I thought if the house wasn't there that you weren't supposed to store something on it, and they were cleaning up. I did say they cleaned up the one on... Uh, on Stark, which was very nice, that boathouse was falling in. So I mean, things are happening, but uh, I just had these uh, yeah, a few questions, and yeah, I couldn't get an address because these these have been vacant for so long. There's um, they're just all overgrown, and sometimes you can see you know a huge pile of concrete back there, and some boats and trucks and stuff. But anyway, I was under the impression that if you didn't have house, you weren't supposed to store some on it, keep it clean or whatever. So gotcha. I, I couldn't give you an address on those. It's just the general location. Yeah, that's right on M29. Yes, sir. And it's east of East M29. side. Yeah. 
almost if you're coming out of Englewood or if you're coming out of uh, on the rocks. There's we'll, like we'll, three we'll, right. You're looking right at them. We'll check the blight okay. uh, right yeah. up and see if that's. But I didn't have an address. I can just give oh, you a, well. a rough idea. And then uh, we'll find those it. other three ones I did turn in, and I just haven't heard nothing. And it was back from April. And uh, usually the guy's very good. He tries. You know, he's like a one-man band, and I know he's over overworked. And uh, are you referring to Shannon? Shannon. Yes. Shannon Murray. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, at, uh, you know. And he says he likes paper, so I did turn in a paper. So that's what well. It, it it takes a village, right? And yep. and we appreciate the concerns. Okay. Um, the board members often refer to our blight complaints, and we yeah. take them oh, very seriously. There was there was one other one that I didn't turn in, but it's on seventy eight hundred, and it's near that uh, Don's house. Is this on Anglewood again? Uh, this one's on Lake, okay. and the house went back. I'm thinking it went back in foreclosure, but the young man is elderly gentleman still living there. So I don't know if, if he's got permission or if he's a squatter or what, but uh, it, I mean, maybe he's got permission to be there. You know, he's a nice guy or something, but I, I did hear the house went back to foreclosure. And once in a while you see a little garbage bag outside, but you never see him. So I don't know if he needs help or assistance or whatever, but I think there's somebody still living there. <coughs> gotcha, I will forward your That's, concerns, Tom, to okay. both Artie and Shannon Murray, okay? Okay. Thanks for bringing them to our attention. Okay. Thanks, guys. Any other public comments? Okay, moving forward to our consent agenda. I will entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda consisting of the minutes from the board meeting of 9-7-2021 and 9-20-2021, uh, the communication of retirement from Officer Dowell from our police department, and the check reports for board approved 920 September 2021 payroll and the checks cut in between meetings. Support. We have motion and support. Um, is this a roll call? No. Hmm? No. Are there any other discussion on the consent agenda? No. Mark, Maureen? No. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the consent agenda and motion approved. Next, we have the fire chief's report. Chief Rose. Good evening. Uh, fire chief's report for September 2021. During the month of September, I attended two meetings, and that was the uh, Harses Island uh, St. Clair Flats Homeowners Association and the uh, St. Clair County Chiefs, Fire Chiefs uh, Association. General business was discussed. Uh, fire department participated in two parades in the month of September, the Pete Hinkle Boat Parade and the, um, pro, uh, the um, Harsons Island Lions Club Parade over there, which was quite large. Uh, both parades were like, quite large, a lot of participation in that. Very nice. Um, we finally received the last of our equipment for our trucks. Our new engines, it's been, they've been mounted. Uh, I do have a few people that need to finish up their training on them. And uh, one truck's in service, the other one truck will be going over to the island at the end of this week. So we'll have that one in service. Uh, new airboat training will be uh, this month. Uh, we'll be conducting uh, driving, towing, and launching the vessel, along with stressing uh, safety on the boat. Um, Fire department's also scheduled for an RTF training, which is rescue task force training. That's uh, where we go in to the school if there's a, or any active shooter incident, uh, we will support the police and go in and um, address the injured that have been involved and, uh, uh, and uh, aid them care and then remove them out of the structure. And that will be put on by Bill Adams from Tri Hospital, and that will be done on the 23rd of October. Uh, we did schedule that for last year, uh, but COVID hit, and they had to cancel that class. So we finally got her back. Uh, we're very busy uh, in the month of September uh, with bad storms. Uh, we had several down wires and trees and power lines across uh, roadways and in yards and widespread power outages. So. Uh, Next month, or I should say this month, Fireboat 2 will be pulled out of the water. I believe it will be next week. And then Fireboat 1 will stay in until the month of December. Question. Fireboat, uh, the fireboats are still over Colony? Yes. Okay. Yes. And, uh, of course, the airboat is uh, 
over in the yard? We have it. I have it at uh, Rose Marine, and, and their um, uh, they have a warehouse right there on uh, um, Dyke Road. Twenty nine, and it's inside. And we're going to pull that. We'll have that. Uh, we're going to put that in our station okay. once we get the other truck in service over on the island. Okay. We just don't have the room to put everything in it. Yeah, so once you get the engine finished for the island, you'll move yep. that over there permanently. Yep. And that bay will be taken up by the airboat. Yep. Thank you, Chief. Any other questions for Chief? Good job. Hey, Thank your you. October 23rd training, is that, uh, is that in-house? Yes, that, that'll be conducted here at the fire station. Um, we'll be doing the, uh, a little bit of hands-on, and then we plan on doing a full-blown drill with the police department uh, once everybody's trained in it. Awesome. Thanks, Chief. Yep. Next agenda item is unfinished business, where at this period of time we have none. So we're on to the new business topics. New business topic 1A has to do with the building department and ordinance 145. It's Clay Township Building Code Ordinance, uh, setting permit fees. It's a resolution 2021-40. Gary? Good afternoon. How are you Good doing evening, today? Right? Um, yeah, this is a, a couple of different resolutions we're hoping to push forward to. If you want to just talk about the first one first, or? That'd be great. One, okay. Uh, so we're looking to uh, align ourselves with the state of Michigan fees. Um, and it's not as drastic as it might sound. Um, generally, uh, and it depends on the size of the project, but generally you're looking at about $25 or $45. Uh, more and that's about it. The main uh, increase will come in administration fees and uh, inspection fees. But um, it's just aligning ourselves with the state of Michigan. I know we sent you probably a lot of paperwork on this. I don't know if you had a chance to review it. But we do have a lot of our surrounding communities that are already aligned with the state. Um, and we're just kind of falling into that same groove. We haven't updated our inspection fees or our permit fees, I should say in about 20 years from what I understand. Uh, so we're just looking to be current and um, kind of put it to a point where when the state raises their fees, we can raise ours automatically also. But our actual line item uh, fees that, that we do have now, uh, it's about the same. Uh, there's no real change there. It's mainly in inspection costs. Um, obviously it costs more today to inspect than it did 20 years ago. <laughs> so we're just trying to get ourselves to that point. Yes. Well, you been, said you sent us a whole lot of, uh, and I see that it's here, uh, but it's not, a, it's not the entire building code from the state, though. Oh, oh. well, we're talking about uh, our <coughs> inspection fees right now. Right. But uh, also, I'm referring to the inspection fees. Yeah, but that's, yeah, that's uh, just aligning ourselves with the state of Michigan yep. and our surrounding communities. But uh, I imagine there's an inspection fee for uh, uh, footings for uh, a, a garage over 400 square feet. Uh, just for the footings and the uh, uh, foundation? Is that part of the building code or building fee? As far as yeah, the absolutely. That would be within the permit fees. Uh, that's all incorporated in there. Okay. Yeah. I was trying to pick that apart and I couldn't see it. So. Okay. I'm sure it is. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of inspections that go on for just a typical building. Um, yeah, we don't have all those listed out, but, um, okay. but yeah. Is there a percentage on... Uh, what the increase would be? So. And, and you know, I, I tried to come up with that number. And because the, the different cost, depending on the size of your job, is so different. Uh, and that's why I went more to a dollar amount. Um, depending on the size of the job, it's going to be $25 more for an inspection than what we're charging now. Yeah, um, our zoning, uh, our zoning permits like uh, um, swimming pools or fences, uh, you know, those type of zoning uh, sheds, uh, those will go from what's right now, uh, we're actually paying people to pull the permits. Uh, we're definitely underwater on those, so we're just trying to break even on those kind of fees. Uh, so that, that'll be up about 45 bucks from what they're used to paying. Um, but pretty subtle considering that we haven't raised fees in 20 years. I see fees, uh, you have a whole list of, whole uh, block of fees or, you know, dishwasher. Right. And all that. Um, right. So 
Actually, you're supposed to pull a permit for all of this stuff that I see in here? That's correct. Um, those those uh, permits on the uh, mechanicals and plumbing, uh, electrical, it's all depending on what you're doing uh, is what determines the cost of your permit. But, but that's specifically for new installations, not uh, existing. Uh, in some cases. Could be remodeled as well, right? Correct. Um, but uh, as far as those goes, the, and we'll just use that as an example, a dishwasher. Uh, virtually the same fees that we charge now are the same fees that the state is charging now. So there's going to be no difference there. That's, you know, some of our fees from the state is actually a little less than what we charge now. Um, and that's why I said our, our main increases are going to involve administration fees and inspection fee. But all of those fees would be set by adopting the Michigan Building Code, correct? That's correct. And then do we need, that's the zoning, recommended zoning permit fees, is that separate? That, well, it, it's part of the fees, but it's not something that the state of Michigan has underneath their fee schedule. So, so that's a local. We'd be setting those separately? Yes. Okay. And the fees that I put down on that paper would pretty much break us even. And that's providing that they only have, you know, one inspection, and one and done kind of a situation. Uh, but at least that would be more uh, near to being what we are, you know, what, uh, what it costs us. Are there any fees in here on the new, on the new proposal that are less than the current fee? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are. That's important to know. <laughs> yeah, so I didn't realize these were separate. So the ordinance, the, the resolution that I, I put with the ordinance 145 is essentially adopting the ordinance, which takes care of the building permit fees. The but fee then, schedule, right? The fee schedule for building, yes. yes. But separately, yes, we'll have to do a different motion to adopt the suggested zoning permit fees. So which is first? The building. Well, let's tackle the... Uh, when we've been talking about the building. Yep, the building. It's ordinance number 145, the Clay Township Building Code Ordinance, setting permit fees. It's resolution 2021-40, right? So I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve resolution 2140 to adopt the Clay Township Building Code for the actual Michigan Building Code 2015 edition and subsequent codes utilized by the state of Michigan. Support. Codes and corresponding fees, correct? Yes. So we have motion and support. Can we get a roll call? Christy Hiltman? Yes. Chris O'Regan? Yes. Cindy Valentine? Yes. Mark Bouchard? Yes. Maureen Borey? Yes. Motion passes. Okay, the second <coughs> part of our illustrious building officials request is suggested zoning permit fees. Um, are we going, does that have a no. number associated with it? No. So we're just going to approve the paperwork in front of us of the, well, we're gonna, we're gonna motion to approve the suggested zoning permit fees for the sheds and fences. So I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the suggested zoning permit fees for sheds and fences. Support. And signs too, right? Yes, there's yes. also sign permit fees, plan review. So yeah. for the viewers at home, we have a suggested zoning permit fee. The zoning permit fee includes application fee is $100. The suggested sign permit fee attached to the building is 50, and with a foundation, it's 100. And we also have a $30 plan review fee, right? Correct. That's minimum, so. Minimum review fee, yes. Yeah. So we have motion and support. We do. For the zoning permit fees set before us. Uh, roll call. Chris Riggan. Yes. Cindy Valentine, yes. Mark Bouchard. Yes. Maureen Borey. Yes. Christy Hiltman. Yes. Okay. That motion passes as well. Thank you so much. So you are much more current than 20 years ago, sir. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. And I say there's not a big difference, um, but at least, you know, like last, uh, our last audit showed that our department was down and it's not that we're not efficient and doing the job the best that we can. It's just we got a shortfall because uh, of 20 year old fees. We're not charging enough, are we? Right. So that should be published on October 13th and then would be taking effect November 12th. Thanks so much. November 12th.
Thank you, Gary. Okay, thank, thank you. you, Gary. Okay, next on our agenda is a resolution 2021-41. It's a special assessment for Joe Char Road paving. So I will entertain a motion. Make a motion to approve resolution 21-41A for resolution one for Joe Char paving. Support. We have motion and support. Is there any more discussion on the resolution? Mark, Maureen? I'm trying to get, trying to get my no. uh, iPad I up. I see it. So they did have 64% in favor respond and seven parcels that did not. So yeah, from the assessing department, Mark and Maureen, while you guys pull this up, I'll, I'll just read this real quick. We have a received a petition requesting a special assessment district be formed for replacement or repaving of the private road, Joe Char Road. There are 22 parcels in the district. The petition is based on total frontage footage in the district, which resulted in a sufficiency of 64.78% in favor of the improvement and 35.22% did not respond. The proposal is from uh, Clancy's contracting in the amount of 90,125 plus interest and administrative Fees, TBD. If approved, this assessment would be spread on a per parcel basis of approximately $4,097 plus interest plus administrative fees. The number of years will be a board determination. So now, you know, the only question I have is the company that is doing that. I haven't seen a uh, site plan for that particular paving, how high it's going to be, the elevation. You know, we don't want to put something in there and approve it. They go ahead and contract it out, and then, of course, they're going to pay for it. But, and then all of a sudden, it creates problems down the road somewhere. So someone should take a look at that and make sure that the elevation is going to be correct uh, with that uh, uh, paving of that uh, street. It's the only thing I'm, I'm asking. So I would agree, but we, we don't have necessarily, I think, all the specs on this just yet. It's a resolution 2021-41, which is the first part in a, in a series of parts to get this approved, Mark. Correct. So I it's expect just, just offering to move for saying that we agree that they should move forward or we don't have an issue with them moving forward so they can actually get the job bid. Um, I do know that PC did consult on it, um, and they do have a couple of companies that are bidding on it, but I don't think we have all that until we say, yeah, we're, we're willing to move forward and, and process this. Well, I just wanted assessment. to make that as a point, per se, as we go down the road, people are going to ask. Okay. Yep. And, so. and that information should be provided to us at a later date and time. We're just giving them, the way I understand the motion to read, is we're giving them authorization and authority to move forward with the bidding portion of it. Okay. Correct. Okay. I'll still have a chance to approve or disapprove. Once we, we will, get it. Yes. and we'll set terms and and periods of time. It's very similar to the resolutions that you guys right. did for North yeah. Channel on the island. Yeah. Probably the ten or meeting. fifteen years will do. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Any more discussion? Mark, you good? I'm good. Christy. Yes. Let's do a roll call. Cindy Valentine. Yes. Mark Bouchard. Yes. Maureen Bory. Yes. Christy Hilton? Yes. Chris O'Regan? Yes. Motion passes. I have one more thing. Please. Thank you. So in my portion, I knew that there was one more thing that we were trying to do, and that, that is 2021-40. Uh, um, what we're looking for in that regard is for an automatic, uh, uh, when it comes to a new code, new code cycle, that were automatic uh, will follow the state of Michigan. Uh, when they update, update the codes, that we will automatically update along with them. Okay. Without having to come before the board and, and ask for that uh, every time a code is uh, updated. So we will walk in, in step with the state of Michigan. When they make a change, we will make a change. As and far I as think codes, that is yes. In our, um, yes. Was that in our resolution? Yes. yes. To include both of them? Yep, yes. it says the 2015 edition and subsequent codes utilized by the state of Michigan. Okay, so that's just so we understand it's an automatic upgrade. Yep. Okay, thank I you. I got your back. Thank you. you. Good with that? Okay. 
1C on the agenda is the Clay Township Milestone Award Plaque. I will entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve um, the purchase of the Clay Township Milestone Award Plaque in the amount of $830 um, coming from line item 101-265-933, building maintenance. I will support it. So you have motion and support. Um, this plaque is to recognize and celebrate our bicentennial of 200 years for the township. Um, that's what this item is referring to. We found uh, an area where we can take it from our budget and um, we think it'd be a good idea. We're, talk we're in talks of uh, where that is going to be displayed, but it will be, you know, it will be a, a, a serious plaque that's meant to be here for uh, uh, future generations to acknowledge and, and support and read on the history of uh, Clay Township. It will also register us with the Historical Society of Michigan. Fantastic. Who would a plaque like that be displayed? Well, there's been a, a couple of um, couple of suggestions so far, and I think we'll probably uh, deliberate on that later. But one of the suggestions would be possibly at our, our time capsule location, wherever we decide where you're going to put that. Uh, maybe that's over in the park. Um, maybe this plaque is celebrated or or identified here within the township offices. You know, maybe one of our frontages. I don't think we have the location picked out yet, do we? We do not. So I think we uh, will probably be involved in that decision when that comes. Do you have some suggestions, Trustee Bouchard? No. Okay. Sounds good to me. Great. So we have motion and support. Um, all in favor of approving the Clay Township Milestone Award plaque, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Next item on the agenda is for the Clay Township Police Department. And they're looking for approval on the taser purchase. It's year four of a five-year contract in the amount of $9,618. I will entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the police department taser purchase year four of our five-year agreement for $9,618. Support. We have motion and support by Trustee Bouchard. All in favor of the Clay Township taser purchase year four of five signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion passes. So we'll have one more payment on that bad boy, right? Probably be time for new ones. One E is the agenda item for the fire department. It's a fire truck bond payment uh, for the new trucks, correct? Correct. And it's by High Point? Yes. So I will entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the fire truck bond payment in the amount of $32,185.80, of which $24,891.77 goes to line 206-990-990106 for the principal payment, $7,294.03 for the interest payment will go to line 206-990-990506. Support. Support. We have motion and plenty of support. <laughs> so the interesting thing, uh, I, I was I was crunching the numbers on this, and we have an outstanding interest rate. Um, but the the principal versus the interest amount seemed to be interesting to me. So so I started looking into it and asked a few questions, and I was reminded that this is a semi annual payment. We make this twice a year, mm -hmm. correct? Yes. So that's that's how the numbers correspond. So at that dollar amount, we will have a so the we will have a roll call vote, please. Mark Bouchard. Yes. Maureen Bory. Yes. Christy Hilton. Yes. Chris O'Regan. Yes. Cindy Valentine. <clears throat> yes. Great. The motion passes. Next item on our agenda 
is the from the Clay Township Fire Department. It's the MAFFF uh, Michigan Association of Firefighters, the tentative agreement for the CBA, and I will entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the Fire Department MAFF tentative agreement for CBA. Support. We'll support that motion. Um, discussion. So, so just to be clear, this is a term from July 1st of 2021 through June 30th of 2024. Okay. These are the only changes that were going to be made to their collective bargaining agreement. It took, quite, it took a while to get to this, didn't it? It did, yes. So finally, we have agreement. Okay, we have motion and support, correct? We do. Uh, roll call vote, please. Maureen Borey. Yes. Christy Hilton. Yes. Chris O'Regan. Yes. Cindy Valentine, yes. Mark Bouchard. Yes. So it was with great pleasure that we will pass this motion. And thank you to Cindy Valentine, Christy Hilton, Chief Rose, and our supervisor, Artie Bryson, for their hard work on this. Thank you to all the firefighters for their bravery and their support of this township. Next item we have on the agenda, 1G. It's a request from the fire department for a DEX turnout gear. I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the fire DEX turnout gear for two sets in the amount of $5,458 from line 206, 970 one um, I understand this is the same thing that was on the last board meeting for two different sets. So that's why there's no invoice here. It's the same invoice we would have saw last meeting. Support. So that, yeah, that's for two sets, right? Correct. So we have motion and support. Chief, your, your idea is to continue buying a couple of sets every, what, couple of months or whatever just to well, keep things current? What happens <coughs> is Brian Sears and um, Donovan Huber's gear comes due in uh the spring of next year okay right now there's there was there's an increase that's going to go into effect of eight percent on the bunker gear uh sometime this month if i can order that that'll save us x amount of dollars towards the purchase of this new gear uh and then next year i'm looking at two more sets of gear so we'll we'll be buying gear instead of uh, you know a couple sets or maybe one set a year, depending on when it comes due. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're not at one point where we're buying 17 sets of gear. That's a little easier on your budget, huh? Yes, yes. And with the 8% savings, that's probably, I don't know, close to 400 plus dollars, yep. right? Yeah. So that makes pretty good sense to me. Mm -hmm. Do we have any questions for the chief? No, oh, get them. So we have motion and support. So all in favor of supporting the fire department's request for the fire DEX turnout gear in the amount of $5,458, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes, Chief. Thank you very much. Um, next order of business, 1H. It's from our Clay Township DPW. It's an Eagle reliability study update amount of $8,730. John, could you give us a, a quick briefing on this, please? Sure. So <clears throat> this is a, uh, it's a hydraulic analysis of our water system, um, which consists of updating our fire flows at our hydrants, our flows in our mains, um, our services. They'll add our colony water main to the system, that type of thing. It is mandated um, that we do this every five years by Eagle, and this was a budgeted item. So PC has all our data, and naturally, uh, you know, they can input this and uh, do it relatively simply, although it's, you know, 8,700 bucks, but. So. Yeah, but something you support? Absolutely. Something that's required? Yeah. Required. We have to do it every five years, yes. And yeah. we budgeted it. And right. we budgeted it. Mm-hmm. How many man hours does it take to do that? Oh, gosh. I, I couldn't tell you, Mark, off the top I mean, of my head. But, the data. I mean. but there is a lot to it. There really is. There's some field work and, and some other things, too. So, 
It looks like we're kind of overdue then. It says it was last done in 14. We actually are. Yes, we're, a year, we're about a year and a half overdue. So. Okay. Well, I guess we best get on it then. <laughs> yeah. So we have a motion. No. So, okay, I'll entertain a motion to support the Eagle Reliability Study in the amount of $8,730. In fact, let's change that. I will make a motion to support the DPW <laughs> Eagle Reliability Study in the amount of $8,730 coming from line item 591-807. Support. We have motion and support. Any further discussion? Uh, is there any cost involved because we are late? No, no, not at all. I talked. I talked with Eagle uh, Will Disser, who's our district engineer. Um, we had a little meeting here a few months back, and um, he said, and I, and I explained to him we were in the middle of um, uh, Colony Water Main and all that, and he, he had no problem with it at all. So, what was Will's last name? Will Disser. He's Disser? our di he's our district engineer. Yes. Thanks, John. So now we have motion and support. Um, all in favor of approving the DPW Eagle Reliability Study, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Next, order of operation. We have a something else from our DPW. It's uh, Anchor Bay Drive Station number four pump repair in the amount of six thousand nine hundred and fifty dollars. I will entertain a motion. Make a motion to approve Anchor Bay Drive Station Number Four Pump Repair for six thousand nine hundred fifty dollars from line five nine zero nine three zero. Support. A motion and support. John, what happened to our pump? Um, as you can see, I think you all got a picture of the uh, quote from Kennedy. Yeah. The yeah. stator windings um, are completely melted. They thought it was due to a voltage issue, probably during one of our recent storms. Um, so. You know, the rest of the pump's in very good condition. Um, they were going to uh, replace the stator and, uh, um, you know, put everything else back where it needed to be. Um, that's about a twelve dollars to $14,000 pump, so. Okay. It's kind of like rebuilding it. How, yeah. how old is that pump? That pump is about two years old. That's the unfortunate part. I wish it was one of our the, uh, older the pumps. Bolt, uh, bolt, bolts were loose. What's that? The, bolt, the, bolts were loose. the bolts were loose because that, that was done by us when we pulled the pump. Oh, okay. Yeah, prior to us taking, okay. taking it to Kennedy. Yeah. So is there something temporary there working for them until we get this? Or? Uh, right now we're running in one pump. Oh. So there's no redundancy at that station. Gotcha. Any idea how long the repair is going to take? A um, couple weeks. A couple weeks? Yeah. So the sooner the better, huh? Yes. Okay. For well, sure. We have motion that's, and that's one of our bigger stations, so. Okay. So we have motion and support. Um, so under 10, so board, um, all in favor of approving the DPW request for the Anchor Bay Drive station number four Kennedy pump repair, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Thanks, John. Okay. We are on to our board member comments. So we start with our click. Sure, I uh, don't really have anything um, other than enjoy the weather while it's here because it's gonna get cold soon. <laughs> that's it, that's all I got. Thank you. Mark? Yeah, last Wednesday at the Planning Commission, we had a power outage, we didn't finish the, uh, the session, we just got into the uh, zoning ordinance change on M29 and that uh, lot going from R1 to C3, so we postponed that until uh, the next meeting. And uh, that's all I have, thanks. Maureen. I have nothing. Just happy to be here. <laughs> um, I just want to report to the board and to the citizens. We are having a mail issue. Um, we have been receiving mail for the past couple weeks that we should have gotten. Some of it's postmarked. I think today we received something that was postmarked June. No, not June. September 10th. Oh. So I'm. I'm Encouraging, if you have questions about online payments, you can make a payment through your bank, um, which they'll send us a check, but we seem to be getting those. It's hit or miss with mail. Mm. So I'm encouraging online payments because we've had so many people that attempted to pay their taxes on time 
and we did not receive it. I do believe there was just a big write-up in the paper over the weekend that the postal service is actually slowing some mail down now. Your standard first-class mail, it used to be one to two days, is now going to be three to five, so it's only going to get worse. Mm. But we also had some certified, certified mail. That's what I was going to say, too. Yeah. That was postmarked September 16th that we got. Last week. What, the 28th, I think? So. It's not us. Well, well, how, do we, how do we handle that? Do you? We set up some fees? excellent, some excellent online <clears throat> payment options. Right. They're but, they're relatively easy, and and we really encourage our citizens to explore that option, to take a look, to call us with any questions. It's pretty self-explanatory, and it's all based off of our website. You can follow it down. It's not very complicated. There's lots of ways to access your information, and the fees associated are minimal or cheaper than driving to the township yeah, and dropping off a check. If you pay with an e-check, it's 95 cents. So if you figure the cost of a stamp right now is 53 cents. So for 95 cents, you can pay it online and know that we receive it. Are so. you getting a delay from the banks as they process the checks, which is electronically, uh, not, not, no. From, from the customer to the bank, and then the bank, they actually mail it in. When is you that, do an online delay? payment through your own bank account, yeah. A lot of people think that it's an electronic payment because it comes electronically out of your account, but they actually print a check sure, yeah. and send it to us. Yeah, I know, that's, and I'm only asking, that's the way I pay mine. Yeah. I, I try to do it uh, quick. Yes. Right. Yeah, but some people kind of waited yeah. till the last minute. It's really what you were asking is a case-by-case -case basis. Okay. We have to look at, did they attempt, you know, right. when we're getting it this late, we know there's a mail problem. Did they attempt to pay it on time or was it, you know, yeah, when you see the postmark and you know, yeah. then that's... But some of them come without postmarks. Right. So. Anything else? Nope, that's it. All right. Uh, I just want to remind the snowbirders. Um, it's that time of year. A lot of people are getting ready to leave the state um, for the winter months, and I get it. Um, let's make arrangements for your uh, plumbing to be drained. Let's uh, let's drain all the traps, supplies. I, I think red pop and or blue pop is in short order this year. I've heard there's a uh -huh. there's a, a, a supply and demand issue. So let's uh, let's do your part. Be proactive. Um, Feel free to leave your name, number, and identify with the Clay Township Police Department, who will, as part of their regular patrol, stop by your place from time to time. They'll check it out for you. They'll do a little report. They'll make sure that all your doors and windows are secure. And it's a service offered by our Clay Township to all of our residents. So we're grateful for the Police Department for something like that. And lastly, um, it's the time of year where the leaves are going to start falling, the weather's going to start getting colder. So if you have uh, an older home with um, like foundation vents and things, uh, let's clean them out. It's probably that time of year to get them shut and take a good look around at your property because it won't be very long and we will no longer want to work outside. Oh. Sorry to be a bearer of bad news. With that being said, we have one more motion. Um, I would like to point out our next meeting, October 18th, is at the Harsons Island Lions Hall at 6 o'clock. October 18th? October 18th at the Harsons Island Lions Club. And then I will make the motion to adjourn. Support. We have motion and support. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you.